the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 124, discover how to deepen intimacy and communication with Corey Lyon Folsom's Soul Statements. Yes, well, you you actually just spoke to the heart of it that, you know, like it's based on the premise that answers are in your center and we can script in advance how we want to speak to ourselves and maybe we we don't do it perfectly right out of the gate but we try and uh we can slowly or however fast we do it our inner dialogue can actually become more of an ally than an enemy so that little voice that of doubt or says you know uncertainty or hopelessness whatever it may be you can like, like I personally, what I actually think inside my head, I, I say, oh, that's what I used to think. Or, oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying that again, like in my own head. What's really true is my heart is a trusted guide. My soul knows what to do. There's grit inside me. I can trust my deep knowing. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we have a very special episode that's tailored specifically to you, whether you're driving the car, sipping a cup of tea or taking a moment to yourself. I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope a reminder that you're not alone. In this episode that we've got a guest who will share a story that resonates with the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and the unwavering strength that lies within each and every one of us. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let the healing begin. But before we dive in to today's inspiring narrative, just a quick reminder that if you find value in our episode, consider supporting us by subscribing and sharing and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach the hearts and the souls and the minds and spreads the message of healing through love. Today, we've got a very special guest, a man with three names, Corey <laughs> Lyon Finsom, and he has been a professional tracker, an Aboriginal skill instructor, a, wa- a wilderness guide for newly sober people. I love that. I've now been sober n- uh, nine years, going on 10, and I'm very excited to have you in the same space. Now, he's a vision quest leader, so we're going to find out more about what that is. After a spiritual soul awakening in 2009, Corey facilitated, and I can't even say the place, but it's a yoga retreat. And this is with Tony Robbins um, and some other programs. Now, he is a qualified NLP, so that's neuro-linguistic programs practitioner and had a relationship coach since 2012. And he assists people from all over the world to increase their soulfulness. How juicy is that? I uh, love this. Welcome to the stage. Hello. How did you get here where you are today? Hi, Charlene. I am so happy to be here with you. Well, gosh, uh, right now I'm a father, a grandfather, a love and relationship coach, an author. Uh, but rewinding the tape in my childhood home, I had a, a great, wonderful childhood in, in rural New England in the States. And the thing is, though, I didn't learn any kind of ways to express my feelings or my needs. And in my house, uh, cheerfulness was valued, you know, nothing wrong with that. And there, w- I went out into the adult world, not really well armed for interpersonal communication and for, you know, getting to sticky parts and relationships and working it through with some measure of grace. So uh, 
and I, and I shrank from my exuberance and my certainty. Uh, I didn't let myself imagine much about how my life could be. I just kind of went from one job or opportunity to the next. And I, I followed my happiness. Yes. But I was not well armed in terms of just being uh, a human being uh, who is honest with themselves and speaking up for their for the, what they want and their needs. So, and I, I wondered why isn't life responding with awesomeness? Cause I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> and at some point I had to just decide to be better. As you mentioned, I participated in a bunch of personal development courses. i learned a ton about myself, but the real shift came when I hired a life coach and he taught me uh, to, the most important thing is to be truthful tell the truth to myself on the inside. In other words, be honest with what my motivations were for doing that thing or for not speaking up. You know, was I afraid? Was I going to be in trying to not be embarrassed? Whatever it was. And so as I became honest on the inside with me, why I did any given thing or not, that's when my life really changed for the better. Mm, yeah it, it is all relationships all relationships start they're an internal piece aren't they communication with ourselves a better understanding of that level of foundation so that we can communicate outward and I love that you've built this co private coaching process and also your book on on relationships because foundationally communication is the number one skill set on the planet if you don't know just google it it'll come up it's the number <laughs> one skill set and in order for us to have a level of relationships that are just bound with this mm, oh, a level of authenticity is that we have to have this level of communication. And it and the job starts with us. It starts with how we communicate with ourselves and that level of authenticity we have with ourselves. So now you're a, a private coach. You coach one-on-one. -on -one, and do you do group, group programs as well? Well, uh, I haven't. I've put in some applications to a few places and waiting to hear back about uh, putting on some workshops. I am speaking in a few weeks at my first church service at Unity of Monterey Bay in California. That's looking forward to that. And with a workshop after in the afternoon. And uh, so, and then there's a, a group of people that have asked me to put on something for them next summer. So it, it's happening. Oh, I love that. I love that. And it's fascinating how it all fits together. Uh, you know, this journey that you took through, um, that were you... Were you an Aboriginal um, guide or were you use how, like how did that fall part of the whole process of teaching people communication in relationships? Sure. Well, when I was young, I think I was 15, I picked up a book in a bookstore called The Tracker. And this person was talking about following actual footprints in the sand or wherever and being lear learning all sorts of other skills you know, at, at the same while. And so he ended up making a school. I went to the school a few years, you know, in my summers, and then I was asked to be an instructor. I lived and worked there for three years. And so we, we taught all sorts of uh, tracking classes, but also edible plants, how to build a shelter, how to decide where to put a shelter, you know, hazard uh, awareness and navigating the desert, all these things that came into play. So making your own clothes, that kind of stuff. So. Oh, I, I love it. So we're in time for the zombie apocalypse and we're, we're yeah. following you around. <laughs> that's, and that's it. I, I love this. I love this. So we, uh, my husband and I, we love to spend time out in nature and quite often we'll look at either, you know, animal stool or the footprints and we'll try and figure out what things are. And obviously Google is off the map out there. So we're really up to our own devices to figure out what it is that we're looking at. But I do, I find that fascinating. So that's interesting. And then that led to you leaning into after obviously having time with that, that coach, that life coach, and now wanting to share with people that missing link of communications and how they can communicate with themselves and how they can communicate with others. So now we were talking before the show that a predominant number of people that you coach are women which is fascinating. Yeah. Yes, and I've got to say, I'm just going to get it off my chest, Corey. Probably the men need your help just as much, but it isn't it interesting that most of your client base are females. And I would love to have a better understanding as to why 
they're not prepared to step up to the line to have a look at their communication. Obviously, it's as it is where you are in America and where we are in Australia, it's the same. Men are less likely to lean into these levels of, let's call it personal development because that's what it is, yeah? Yeah, oh, sure. Like when I'll go to a personal development workshop, it's 80% women across the board, no matter what kind of personal growth workshop. That's been my experience. I, I just wonder, you know, this has obviously been a trend for quite a long time. I've been in the game for more than three decades, so more than three, 30 years. And this has been a trend across the board for three decades. You know, where is this going to go? Is this going to widen the gap between men and women if women are still leaning in at this level to the personal development? Like, I don't know. Right. Uh, and, and so I think men are in danger of, you know, getting dropping farther behind uh, because the women are getting all of this understanding and skills and tools and and tips and putting it in practice and stepping up and, you know, becoming their own version of Wonder Woman. And the guys are, you know, watching watching the telly or maybe they're working out at the gym. I mean, you know, our world is changing for the better in so many ways as it falls apart. <laughs> but like when I was a kid, nobody, you know, only like freaks went to the gym, right? Like these bodybuilder dudes. Now it's like it, it pretty much it's so common. I go to the gym even. Everyone so, the gym. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the women are leading the way. And, you know, what I hear so much from them is I want to meet someone special, but I don't want to repeat the same patterns that were, you know, unhappy or distasteful before. I want to do it better this time. And mm. so how do I prepare myself to meet someone extra special? And I and love so that because a, fundamentally yeah. it's about know thyself, isn't it? It's about having a better understanding of ourselves and maybe our values and what we hold to be true and our own patterns of behavior. So we know what it is that we're attracting. I, I hear what you're saying. Now, can I um, be so bold to ask, are these the types of things that we can expect in soul statements, your beautiful practical guidebook that you've put together? Yes. Well, you, you actually just spoke to the heart of it that, you know, like it's based on the premise that answers are in your center and we can script in advance how we want to speak to ourselves. And maybe we, we don't do it perfectly right out of the gate, but we try and uh, we can slowly or however fast we do it, our inner dialogue can actually become more of an ally than an enemy. So that little voice that, of doubt or it says, you know, uncertainty or hopelessness, whatever it may be, you can like, like I personally, what I actually think inside my head, I, I say, Oh, that's what I used to think. Or, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying that again, like in my own head, what's really true is my heart is a trusted guide. My soul knows what to do. There's grit inside me. I can trust my deep knowing to guide me. My body is healing itself. I'm held in God's love. So you're basically re remembering on purpose something that's more empowering, more resourced, more true about you. So it's an affirmation that's not some future thing you want to become. You're like, oh, I'm 10 pounds thinner. You're saying, you know what? There's strength in my center. Mm -hmm. And your cells and your bones go, oh, yeah, that's right. And you feel it and it's true and you're that much more connected to you and your next thought can be a better one. Your next action can be a better one. So, so true on every level. And uh, and I do believe that the answer lies in every one of us. And in fact, my catch cry is you've got this. I believe that we were uniquely designed to have the answers and we just need sometimes a coach or a mentor to get us there. So uh, I'd love to know, you say that your book is a, um, a practical guide. So how does that turn up in the book? Sure. Well, I I have lots of anecdotes. I have an examples, lots of personal journaling prompts, uh, encouraging you to ask different questions. And with the, the communication, the more you can feel the deeper you, the more you connect to your to your own axis, you revolve around your own axis, the more 
you can speak with clarity, the more you can speak with fearlessness or or greater, <laughs> less fear anyway, and f- fear less. And so it's just that being clear on what I stand for, what's important to me, then it makes it so I'm able to speak up maybe a little sooner when before things are really tense, just in the beginning when you're like, you know, that didn't sound quite right. I'm wondering, maybe I'm not understanding it. Do you mind repeating? Or, you know, that kind of thing, you kind of headed off at the past or that's, I just sense something's going on. Let's speak to it. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. And so it's like the more you fill your own well, the more you're connected to who you are, tuned to your own frequency, the more you can just speak to um, uncomfortableness or awkwardness and and be a little more fearless. Mm. I call it the courage to be clear. Uh, I love it all. And I think that when we know ourselves just that little bit more deeply is that we give others a different level of grace as well. So if we might misinterpret something they're saying, because we're holding ourselves in a different level of worth or self-esteem is that we give them the grace to say, well, actually, I'm not not actually getting that. Could you reckon you can repeat it? And we don't instantly take it as as an attack at ourselves. In fact, it's the last thing we take it as, even if it is. (laughs) So I do think that that amount of work that we do on ourselves and how we build that relationship with ourselves. And I'm a woman of faith, so obviously we know and my relationship with God. So how how much we lean into all of that really allows us to turn up differently with other people and give them that level of grace because I don't think our parents loved them with all of my heart, but I don't think that they had a perfect role model for communication. And if we go back enough generations, we can see life has changed so much. What was true then is not true now, um, both economically and also spiritually and also even the balance of power, let's call it that, between men and women. What was true back then is not true now and we're living in a different environment. So there needs to be new rules of the game. The game has changed and those new rules are all in and around communication with self and communication with others. I love it. I love it. So tell me a little bit more about the soul statements and uh, can you show us the book and tell us a few more goodies that are in there? (laughs) Okay. So here's the book. I love it. Statements. And uh, one, one of the, my favorite concepts in the book is what's right about you is always available. You know, what's wrong is always available. Yes. But so is what's right. And so let's focus on um, what I've got. And like you said, like, um, like I got this, that's a beautiful soul statement. I have, a, I had a woman that I coached recently. She uses that as her soul statement however, 20 times a day. She, but it's that pause to really believe it. Like, you know what? I do got this and just, you know, add a physical gesture or just feel it in your cells and in the rightness of your, of your uh, destiny, if you will. So just. I got this as a great soul statement. Oh, and, I love it. I love it. So another and- thing is a spirit bow, you know, an agreement you have with your inner self. And there's a, some journaling prompts for that too. Like I vow to hold my heart as sacred and worthy of protection. Mm. That's a spirit bow. Mm, I love it. So all in and around journaling so that we can get to know ourselves better and also see those patterns of behaviors. And so also these uh, affirmations, these practicing of positive words to hold us into a different frequency so that we can have the outcomes that we're looking for. But from what I'm hearing you say, Corey, is it starts with us, is it starts with our relationship with ourselves. And that's how we can turn up more differently for the people that we love and adore. Now, you've said that a lot of your client base are women who have either been divorced for a while or are in between relationships or don't want to repeat the patterns of before. So, you know, what's what would you say is one of the handy tips that they could use uh, to bring those levels, those patterns of behavior into the limelight so that they can make different choices moving forward? To, it's, it's really about as, I, as we talked about before, owning your voice and and 
spending a little time, some quiet time, uh, like a soul sim in like, there's a place at my center where I can tune out everything that's not me. And, and just the, the stronger you are, the more comfortable with, with stillness you are. And there, it takes a little ability to hold tension too. We don't, instead of when you used to offer an opinion or a critique, maybe just hold that as a little tension and just ask a question, be curious instead of critical. Just say, you know, I'm. Could, do you mind explaining what you meant by that? That kind of thing. Just be curious about the other person is would would go a long way. And I did want to say I I I don't want to be too hard on men because when a man gets it, it's instant, and it's like oh, so it's like I don't have to practice anything. I just have to stop practicing all the stuff that really wasn't you know my true warrior knight person uh, that I am. And so, uh, when he gets it, he gets it, you know, like there's, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out thing. Oh, they can come. Up with <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love yeah. that. I, I do on every level. There's so much goodness in what it is that you're talking about. And I do, I love this using affirmations to reprogram ourselves so that we can, um, move forward in a different light. I love it all. And I do love this space between thought and action where you can, I, my favorite little sentence is, isn't that interesting? So because <laughs> I'm, I'm totally ADHD and, uh, have patterns of behavior that like, it, I don't know, they're so programmed that I would say these things before I'd even give myself a chance to even process what it is I'm about to say is that my response to pretty much everything that happens in my life, whether it's someone talking to me or something physical that happens is, isn't that interesting? Because it's benign and it doesn't have a positive or a negative frequency. And it just gives me an opportunity for those three seconds just to break the patterns of behavior, not respond instantly and just hold that thought. So I don't sometimes say it out loud. I say it internally, isn't that interesting? And it just gives me that moment to go, hang on, you don't need to tell a story because ADHD, we just jump back in and tell you a story. That's how we show you we're listening to you. That's that's how our brains work. But um, it just allows me to go, hang on, you know what? And let's recognize what it is that they've said before you jump in and say anything, girlfriend. <laughs> I love it. I yeah, love it. that's so awesome because I, I if I had to say what's the number one relationship communication skill, it would be just what you're talking about, which is acknowledge. Like acknowledge everything the other person says before moving on. Yeah. It's like, been a oh, game I, changer I, for I, me. I get that this is a big deal for you. Yeah. Boom. Well, just acknowledge it. it. You don't have it to is, agree. You don't have to think they're right, but you can acknowledge, hey, this is a big deal for you. I I see that. I get yeah. it. And um, and I think when you're neuro spicy like I am, that uh we've got our wiring is a little differently. So we we like want to compare wounds. It's how ADHD works. So when someone tells a story without even acknowledging, I'd go straight into telling them my story. And that's just me showing you mine. So I'm going, I understand you. So when you're neuro spicy and say, so audience today, if you're neuro spicy, this is even more important. <laughs> you need to get <laughs> space between thought and action and you need to acknowledge. And um, because, you know, sometimes that's all it takes is that level of acknowledgement. And then you can tell your story. Then you can go on to give you a rebuttal and all the other juicy things. I love it. I love it. love it. So now the link for the book is going to be in the show notes. And it's also going to be in the show description as well. And it's called Stop Soul Statements. And what's very unique about this book, thank you, that's a beautiful picture. <laughs> what's very unique about this is it's a practical guide. It's not just one of those books that you just read from end to end. You read it, you learn Learn it, you implement it, you do it, you read it again. And it's a practice. It's a practical guide, but it is a practice. You're learning a practice of communication that's going to help you build those strong relationships, first of all, with yourself and then with others so that you can move forward. Is there a favorite part of your book, Corey? Oh, I just was opening a section to say, you know, there's here's a quote uh, and here's a, a not to do list might include. And there's personal journey, journaling exercise soul statement example. So my boundaries are valid. That's a soul statement. Um, saying no is a tool in service of my value and values. So uh, it. it's it's really a, a almost a workbook. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So today, if you're listening and you are a survivor of family and or domestic violence, it's just because that's what's written before is not the story that needs to be written moving forward. And yes, we have to start with us. 
we have to start with that level of forgiveness for ourselves and we have to start with that level of understanding about ourselves and really reaching in. And this beautiful book, Soul Statements, is a great way to start that journey to help you do the inside work so that you can be the communicator that you need for you to live your best life. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Corey, I could chat with you forever. <laughs> but in finishing today, Corey, what would be your words of wisdom to our audience? I would say the next right action is more obvious when you're connected to your value and to what you value. That's powerful. I would say more obvious and more and easier. <laughs> you know, mm. if you connect to your value, connect to what you value, then you're you're you can move better in the world. Oh. Take that next step in the right direction. I love that. That is so foundational and taking the time out to really determine what your values are, what's important to you and doing a values exercise will just, that will put you in good stead for making better decisions to move forward. And That's when right. we make better decisions, we have that, you know, your own psychological immune system kicks in to support you on your journey. And so, you know, that means you've got a healthy immune system as well. So it, it's not just a surface thing. This is a deep thing. So I love it. I love it. This is great, Corey. It's been a fabulous opportunity to chat with you. And if you're listening today and you are a survivor of family and or domestic violence, know that we're offering these beautiful pamper days. So think day spa on steroids, not just here in Adelaide, but globally because of 2023, Healing Through Love has gone global and we now offer these beautiful pamper days all around the world so reach out to healing through love and we'll let you know where the local one is to you now if you're listening today and you're a practitioner whether that is that you're a wellness practitioner or in, or you just have a heart for change we're looking for practitioners to help us uh, in these beautiful pamper days all around the world so reach out to us at healing through love and we'd love to have a conversation and put you in the right community so that you're in that connection with the people that are running these beautiful pamper days in your local community it's been a privilege to have this conversation and i'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side that's a bye from me and a bye from corey Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.